This chapter looks at life cycle costing, which is another one of the modern management accounting techniques that we need to look at. Once again, it can involve both calculations and discussion, and it can link to other parts of the syllabus, such as budgeting or pricing. There's three aspects that we're going to look at. First of all, we've got to identify what we mean by the life cycle and look at the different costs at the various stages. The calculations involved come from being able to derive a life cycle cost. And finally, obviously, in order to discuss the technique, we've got to look at its implications and the benefits of it. OK, so some of the key areas then in this chapter, in this chapter um, key to understand the difference between traditional costing and life cycle costing. Traditionally, what we do is we measure whether our products are making a profit or loss on a periodic basis. We don't do that with life cycle costing. We look at whether or not we're going to make a return over the total life. So we're not worried about period by period. We know initially the product will make a loss. We are concerned with whether it makes a return in totality. Now, the other key difference between the two, traditionally, when we're looking at how profitable our products are, we're looking at our selling price, we bring in our production costs. Product life cycle considers all, product life cycle, sorry, life cycle costing considers all the costs that go into that product. Now, that includes the development, the research, the design, all of that comes into the cost of our unit. Okay, you no longer keep R&D, for example, as an overhead within your business. You're allocating it to each product and making sure that return from your product outweighs that cost as well as the production cost. Now you need to be aware of the five stages of your product life cycle. We've got our development cost. We've then got the four stages where we're actually selling the item. Introduction just introducing the product to the market, few um, sales at this point. We then start to get some growth before we then hit maturity where those sales sort of level out. We found um, where our place is in the market and then eventually our sales will start to decline. Now the product life cycle will look like this for every product but it can be for differing lengths of time. Each product has its own life cycle maybe shorter or longer than other products. But they'll all go through these five stages. Now we've said it's particularly applicable in a modern environment. One of the reasons for that, as we said, was short product life cycles. Now what's really key here and why that becomes so important is that often up to 90% of our costs are incurred in development okay, before the product even reaches the market. So if we're trying to make a return and we're, we're doing that once we've launched the product, we're only ever impacting our production cost, which is just 10% of the overall cost of the product. So section 2.4 then talks about ways in which you could maybe increase that return. And then you get your implications here. Now what you could have here, as I said, is discussion in terms of what the stages are, what's happening at each stage, um, and the implications of life cycle costing. You could also have a few calculations here. You might have to work out the return of your product. And what's key here is that you include the R&D development cost in the overall return of that product. Just looking at production costs, you're not applying life cycle costing. What we have here then is a section A question on life cycle costing. This is going to be a calculation question and we're going to be looking at working out the life cycle cost per unit. So what we need to do then is to consider all of the costs that are going to be incurred during the four years of the product's life cycle. This is going to include the half a million dollars that has spent designing and developing the product because what we want to do is end up with an average cost over the four years looking at both the fixed elements and the variable elements. So what we need to do then is to um, jot down all of the different costs which are going to be associated with this new product.
And we've got marketing costs then, um, and we've also got disposable disposal costs, as well as the research and development costs, which are going to be incurred just in each of the periods. We've then got variable production costs and customer service costs per unit. So for year one, that's going to be $349 per unit. And there are 4,000 units being produced. So we'll need to do some calculations to give the total variable costs for each. Starting off then, we've got the R&D costs of half a million. We've also got the marketing costs, which are 1.2 million, 0.4 million, 0.1 million, and then finally 0.1 million in the final year. So we've got um, marketing costs then, which in total are going to come to 1.8 million. We've also got then those disposal costs in the final year of 0.2 million. So that's going to be then 2.5 million of fixed costs. We've also got then the variable costs per unit. So in year one, the variable costs then are $349 per unit, and there are 4,000 units being produced. So again, sticking with millions, that's 1.39 six million. For year two the total cost is also three hundred and forty nine thousand but this time there are three hundred and forty nine dollars per unit sorry but this time there are nine thousand units that's going to cost three point one four one million. The variable costs per unit then have fallen by the time we get to year three indicating this product is perhaps in maturity. Um, so we've got $259 per unit, but there's a massive 30,000 units that are being manufactured. So that is going to um, come in at $7.77 million. Finally then in year four, we have got uh, costs of $224 per unit and there are 10,000 of those so that's 2.24 million. So the total cost then for all of the costs which are incurred for the four years is 17 million and 47,000. So we've got 17 million um, of costs which need to be shared out amongst all of the units. Over the four years then, there is a plan to make 53,000 units. So the cost per unit is going to be the 17,047,000 divided by the 53,000 units. So that's going to give us a cost of $321.64 per unit. So that's averaging not just the variable costs, but also all of the fixed costs which are incurred during the time the product is being manufactured. And the correct answer there is obviously D. In a previous examiner's report, the F5 examiner has stated then that she finds it frustrating when students are calculating a life cycle cost if they don't include all of the costs um, as well as the variable costs. So make sure you remember things like research and development costs and decommissioning costs when working out a cost per unit. The other thing about life cycle costing, remember, is that the cost per unit is averaged out over all of the periods, even though the cost of production might vary as they did in this case. So in summary, life cycle costing considers all the costs and revenues of a product throughout its life. So key difference to traditional, all costs, so it includes research, development, design in that overall assessment of a product's profitability, and it does it across the whole life rather than looking on financial period basis. 
There are five key stages to the product life cycle, which you need to be aware of and you need to understand what is happening to your product in each of those stages. Now, having that understanding will help you to establish the price that you want to set to manipulate demand or maximize profit, depending on our objective at each of those stages of our life cycle. Now, we'll touch more on this in chapter four when we look at pricing strategies that are available to us.